Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how you can create a top-down shooter game in Godot without writing a single line of code. Now, this is possible because of a feature in Godot, which is the visual scripting. So, we'd make use of the visual scripting to create the game. And hopefully, this should be the first um, tutorial on YouTube showing you how to do this. Okay, so once you have your project opened up, you've created a whole new project. What you do first is head into your um, 2D scene. Next up, you need to select this node 2D, click on the plus sign. Now we're going to add a child node and that would be our player. The player will be a kinematic body 2D, so create that. Now we have an error here, which means we need to add a collision shape for our kinematic body 2D. So you need to select this, add a collision shape 2D to this. So to do that, click on the plus and we'll switch up collision shape um, 2D. So there we go. And we also need to add in a sprite. So select the kinematic body um, 2D node, click on the plus sign and we'll switch up um, sprites. There we go. Okay, so we now have the sprite there. And we can head into our source folder. I already have the sprites I'll be making use of here. So source PNG and we're making use of the man blue. So the man blue holds a gun. So select this and you can drag this all the way to your texture. There we go. So we now have the player. Next up, select your collision shape 2D. Set the shape and we'll set it to a rectangle. So resize this so it covers the player. And there we go, beautiful. So before we add in our visual script, we need to rename our player. Now this is optional, but I personally would love to change the name from um, kinematic body 2D to player, so we can identify this um, later on. So select player, and you need to click on this um, script with the plus sign here. So click on that in this dialog. So by default, the language should be set to GD script. So you need to change the language from GD script all the way to visual script. There we go. So we'd leave others with their default values. So head into create. Okay, so we've successfully created our visual script right here. So the first thing we need to do in creating a top-down shooter game is handle the movements of the player. To do that, we need to add in functions. Now, now we can make use of these functions when we need the player to move in a specific direction. So the first thing we'll do is head into the members right here and click on the plus sign. Now we'll rename this edit member and we'll rename this as right, press enter, add another, right click, edit member, left. As you can see it's creating it there, I'll zoom in so you can see it. So that's right, left, add another function, edit, up, add another function, edit, down. There we go. So let's start with the up function. So I'll drag the function all the way here. You can zoom out by holding down control and making use of the scroll right here. So function up there, good. So now let's add a condition to check if the up key is pressed. To do that, you can right click in an empty area and search up condition. Okay, so we have our condition there. Let's open this. Okay, so here we have our condition. Okay, so we'll link this visual script function to this visual script condition. You can do that by clicking on this and dragging to link this to this. So we've successfully linked the function to the condition. Now let's check if the key is pressed. To do that, right click and search up action. Open. Okay, so now select the action and in the inspector you should be able to set the action which is pressed. So we'll set this to UI up and we'll link this to this. Okay, so that's the condition which checks if up key is pressed. Let's add a variable to handle the movement of the player. So to do that, you head into your members and click on this plus sign. And we'll name this as move underscore direction, D-I-R, and press enter. Now you need to also change the type of this variable. You can do that by right clicking, edit members, and set the type to vector2. And we also need to export this. We need to make use of it in the inspector. So check on and close. So with that checked, you can select your player. And in the player inspector, you should be able to see the script variable, which is a move direction. Now you need to drag this into the scene and you should have this. Now, if it's true, link this to this and select. We should have some properties here. In our properties, we need to set the um, assign OP. You need to set that to moving upwards. So you need to subtract to so set that to a sub 
and for the index we're moving on the y-axis so you said that's y now you should see a value here which by default is zero you need to change this to one and there we go that's all for the up now we need to repeat this for every single function we have here okay so just so we don't waste your time i would add a clip speed right here Okay, so we've successfully created this for all the functions. Now, if you pay attention to the um, right and left, you can see we're adding to the move direction, the x, when we're moving right. And for the left, we're subtracting to move um, backwards. For down, to go downwards, we're adding to the direction, dot y. And keep in mind, we're adding 1 for each of this. Okay, so with this done, let's go all the way to the bottom. Now, we need to make use of a built-in function in Godot. And to do that, you need to click on override an existing built-in function right here. And let's search up um, physics process. There we go. Physics process floats. And you open that. So with this open, you can drag this all the way. And now we're going to drag in all the functions we created up here. You can do that by selecting, let's start with down. So drag in down and left and then right and then up. I would link all this starting from the physics process so physics to down down to left left to right and right to up and just in case you're wondering why we have a larger um, area to walk in it's because we enabled the distraction free mode you can do that by clicking on this right here so you can you can disable and enable there we go so with this done we need to create a variable to handle the movement speed of the player so to do that head into variables click on the plus and we'll call this speed Enter. Now we need to change the type just like we did for our vector to right here. So edit member and type will change this to a float. And for the float, we'll set this to 300, which is serve as the speed of the player. So OK and close. OK, so with this done, I'll zoom out. Now we need to get the speed variable which we just created and multiply it by the speed delta which we have here, right here. To do that, make sure you exported your speed variable and you can confirm that you exported it by right clicking edit member and confirming that this is checked. So with that check, let's go back. Let's disable the destruction free mode, select player and we should see our speed right there. Now you need to drag this into the scene. So when you drag this into the scene, just like we did, it's by default, it sets the variable. So we need to make this a getter. So we'll close this and select speed, hold down control and drag this into the scene. There we go. So this should get the speed. Let's enable destruction free mode and enter this. Let's multiply. There we go. Mats multiply and drag this all the way down and here. OK, so this multiplies A by B. For A, we'll drag this and link it to this. And for B, we'll drag the get speed and link it there. So we'll multiply this and the result is what we have right here. Now we'll multiply the result by normalized uh, move direction. We need to normalize the move direction to prevent the player moving at a faster speed when going diagonally. Okay, so to do that, let's go out of destruction free mode, select player, and let's select move direction. Once again, hold down control. We need this as a getter, so hold down control, drag into the scene, and we have that there. Okay, now right click in an empty area and search up um, normalized. It's a vector too, so we should have it here. So vector to normalize, select that and open this up. Now you need to link this to this. And once again, let's get a mat multiply. So right click and we we'll search up multiply. There we go. And the result of our delta multiplied by the speed would add that here. And the result of a normalized move direction would add that here. Now, as you can see, we cannot add this and that's because the type of this operator is set to float. Now this is a float and VC2 is a vector 2. So we cannot add this um, here. The best solution is to select this and change the type back to any. That way it should accept the vector 2. So select the vector 2 and paste it there. Okay, so now let's enable the destruction free mode and in here. Now with the result of uh, multiplying these two is what would serve as the linear velocity of our movement slide move and collide which we're going to add right now so to add that right click 
and search up move and collide there we go open this now link the up all the way to on self and vector 2 to this there we go so the result of this would be the linear velocity so before we add in a rotation once the scene starts we need the move direction to be zero and zero so right here let's um disable distraction free mode and select your player hold down select move direction drag this into the scene so we disconnect this from this and connect it to this there we go and connect this to this i think i need to organize this and okay so this looks perfect okay let's enable destruction free mode and we have this now okay so we can now preview our scene so preview and select current okay we need to save our scene so control save and we name this as scene or um we'll save this as stage one save this and preview select the current scene And we now have this. So I'm pressing the keys on my keyboard and the player is moving up, down, right, left and all in all directions, which is nice. Now we need to make the player rotate towards the mouse. Now this is very easy to do. So close this and let's zoom back in right here. Yes. Okay. So right click and search up look, which is a look at and it's a vector too. So look at and we need to link and we need to connect this to this. Okay, so now the player will look at whatever points we have set here. Right now it's set at 0, 0. So we need to get the position of the mouse and set it to this. Okay, so to do that, right click and search up position, which is the get global mouse position. So select this, open, and we have that. Now connect this to this, and you can now preview the game. And hooray, we have our player looking, okay, we have a player um, looking at the mouse, which is nice. It's exactly what we want. So in the next part of the tutorial, we'll work on the enemy respawn and the player shooting. So there you go. If you want to learn some more visual scripting, don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next tutorial.